heads, I am here in the same sitting doing part three of ranking Degrassi parents. This was requested by Zane Landon on Instagram. Thank you, Zane. We are going to wrap this baby up with part three, the last grouping of Degrassi parents. I am separating divorcees. I am not including teenage parents like Jenna or Liberty. And I'm not including the parents that are so briefly seen or don't do anything. For example, Jack Jones parents are not going to be featured here. After doing part one, I decided to change these tiers a little bit. I see that I, I made an error, but we're already in, we're already going, so it's fine. So here are the tiers. We have Adopt Me, we have Great Parents, Parents I'm Indifferent Towards, and this was in the last video, it was the WTF tier, which translates to either overwhelming or confusing. Then we have the Need Help tier, and finally, Awful Parents. So, I think I said everything I need to say. Let's get going. First, the Nahirs. This is Goldie's parents. I don't think we ever saw Goldie's mom. But from the little moments that we did get with Goldie's dad, I think he was great. Great parent. Then we have Shay Powers' parents. And they confused me. They confuse me for a few reasons. Like, why, why are they poor? They're not poor. She's like an ER nurse. I don't think they're, they're poor, but they're saying like, oh, Shay, we can't afford this, blah, blah, blah. And why aren't they strict? Why won't they let her go on a date? Because they don't seem strict in any other way. They just seem inconsistent. So for the powers, I'm going to call them overwhelming or confusing. This tier was formerly known as WTF. Next, we have Caitlin Ryan's parents. Now, as you may recall, Caitlin's dad was cheating on the mom. And also, the mom freaking knew it and just wasn't doing anything. And I don't know. Look, no judgment if you've been in this situation and you've done the same thing. Like, no judgment. But for that reason and other reasons, like... Just the way Caitlin's mom carries herself. She just seems very weak to me. And that frustrates me. That annoys me. So, dad sucks. Mom's a wimp. I'm going to call them awful parents. Next, we have Riley Stavros' parents. I don't think we ever saw the dad. But we did see the mom several times. As you may recall, she kind of found out that Riley is gay. But then chose to just ignore like flat out ignore it just pretend it wasn't happening and it was weird it was and she would just be she was super like passive about it like around beating around the bush like kind of two-faced like going behind his back and like i'm gonna say she needs help i don't think she's a total lost cause like obviously she super duper loved him but she has some um she's got some problems that she needs to work through oh my god <laughs> next we have the Bakers, Becky's parents. I hate them. I hate them. They're awful parents. You know how Degrassi makes Christians just look so bad, but they're the worst version of Christians, okay? And then when they are asking Becky to not testify against Luke or to lie about Luke and what he did, and then when she helps get him locked up and they're just they just kind of like start to ignore her they basically shun her in her own house like terrible parents awful parents you know what we might have to eventually take all the awful parents and then rank them in order of most awful to least awful they would be pretty high up on most awful i hate them next we have jt's grandma who we only see when jt and liberty go to tell her that they are pregnant. She seems fine. I'm indifferent. Whatever. Who cares? Next we have Spinner's mom. She's great. She's great. Now she raised a little asshole, but I think she seems like a great lady, despite how her offspring turned out. Okay, next we have Tristan's mom. Now even though she also raised Owen, who was not so great, 
I think Tristan's mom seems like a great mom. From what I remember, we only see her in the hospital when Tristan is dealing with his traumatic brain injury, but she seems very nurturing, supportive, and just like patient and like someone who is willing to learn. So I'm going to put her in great parent. Okay, next we have Rick Murray's mom. She was very fussy, like very fearful, a fearful lady. I don't know, she seemed kind of unstable actually, which could be where Rick got it. I'm going to say she, she overwhelmed me. Like, stay away from my son! Makes me nervous. Next we have Zig's mom. I think she seems like a great mom. Yeah. She seems great. She seems sweet. She's really trying. I like when Zig reconciled with her. <laughs> I don't even like Zig, though. Next we have Melanie Brody's mom. And she confuses me. Why are you not going to let Melanie have a bra? I'm sorry. Look at you. You look cool. You don't look strict. See, this is another thing. Like, she doesn't seem strict. You're not going to let a 12-year-old have a bra? But you'll also, like, send her out to get groceries on her own? How Are you strict or not? She confused me. And she doesn't look poor to be like, we have absolutely no money. Why you look so nice then? I don't know. I, I can't really judge a book by its cover. I mean, I look really nice and I'm poor. Oh, next we have Grace Cardinal's mom. She seems like a great mom. Just like Tristan's mom, she has that very patient kind of vibe, like calm, patient, nurturing. My cat's getting up. Proof. So I'm going to put her in great parent. I don't know. I don't, I haven't really connected with other parents enough to put them in adopt me. So I'm going to just put Grace's mom in great parent. <laughs> Next we have Stephanie K's mom. She's hilarious and everything, but she's not great. She's too strict, which again, is something I hate. She's too strict and she doesn't have that nurturing vibe. It doesn't feel like you can talk to her. She's very professional, like formal. It seems like all business. It doesn't feel like there's a real connection and real like love. So I'm going to put her in need help. She didn't really do anything too bad, but she needs some work. And then we have Arthur's dad. He's like one of those dads where it's like, he's kind of more of a friend than anything else. He seems just kind of immature, but he hasn't done anything bad except like not locking the door when you're naked with your girlfriend, but we forget sometimes, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna put him in indifferent. He's okay. Next we have Imogen's mom, Natalie. Okay, we know that Imogen hates Natalie. I don't think we know why though. Do we know why? I don't, I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, I thought she seemed okay. A little formal, kind of like Stephanie K's mom, just doesn't really have that nurturing vibe. She does seem like she'll support you, even if it's just with money. But she does seem kind of like, like she could be, she, she has like this evil villain kind of manner to her. I'm going to say I'm indifferent towards Natalie. Next, we have Spike's mom. Spike's mom is really a legendary, like, everybody just loves her and values her. I think she belongs in Adopt Me. I don't even know why Spike was so mad at her when, when Spike got pregnant. She's like, you don't know what it's like to be 14. Like, she didn't do anything to you. Why are you screaming at her? You know what I mean? Yeah, I like Spike's mom. Adopt Me. Next, we have Officer, Officer Turner. Dave Turner's dad. He seems cool. I don't really uh, remember much about him because he's like the school safety officer for a while or whatever. But he seems cool. He seems chill. I'm going to put him in great parent. Next, we have Terry's dad. It's tough. 
he is not, first of all, he is not sexist because contrary to what Vula's dad was like, you know, Vula's dad's like, you can't go to the dance and touch boys. And then Terry's dad's like, go get it, girl. My girl's going to go out there and dance with boys. <laughs> I thought that was really great. He is, he empowers her. He encourages her to grow up, to get out there, to become a woman, to go on a date. Like, yes, love that. But when he blew up on Paige and Spinner at the hospital, it changed things for me. And I know it's easy to say like, well, he's upset. Yeah, but he screamed at two children who were crying. I'm going to say he needs help. He needs some anger management. He can, he can get through it. I think he's got potential. Next, we have Peter Stone's dad. He needs help. Uh, no, he doesn't need help. He's awful. He's awful. He's an absent father. Um, really doesn't care about Peter at all. When he and his new girlfriend like are having a baby and stuff, and he's just like, Peter, get away from me. I don't have any room for you. It was just he's just off putting. Yeah, I'm just putting him straight and awful. Next we have Joey Jeremiah's mother. Now, I've always kind of resented Joey Jeremiah's mother, if that's the right word. Because I think she is too nice to him. <laughs> because I really don't like Joey. And she's just too good to him. She just gives him everything. You know what? That is not true. She's a great parent. And every kid deserves some something like this. A parent like this. Um, and Joey's dad is included in here too. But he's... We don't really see him. They give him a big allowance. They pay for him to do stuff. They let him be free. They let him hang out with who he wants to and like wear what he wants to. Like he can just do everything that his little heart desires and they support him emotionally and financially. She's really a lovely lady. And I think any of my ill feelings towards her are simply because I'm jealous of Joey <laughs> and I think Joey sucks. So you know what? Joey's mom, adopt me. I'd love that. Pay my car off. Pay for my insurance. Give me a big allowance. Don't question me when I have two boyfriends calling the house at the same time. Adopt me. Next we have Liz O'Rourke's mom. And I know we don't really see her. We see her like one time. But we can learn a little bit about her simply through Liz. She lets Liz kind of like look how she wants and go where she wants. Even though Liz's mom was like, what do you mean a boy's coming over to study? She was like, weird about that. Don't know why. But the other thing we have to take into account here is that it was in fact Liz's mom's boyfriend who was abusing Liz. Now we don't know anything about that situation, but like, mom, you really had no idea? You didn't know at all? Mom, you left this strange man alone with Liz? I don't know. That's questionable. So I'm going to call her confusing. We're just going to call her confusing because there is a lot we don't know. And finally, we have Shane's parents. The 70-year-old parents of teenagers. Ugh, okay. Again, more strict parents. Not a fan of the strictness. However, they have reasons to be strict religious reasons. They're really just like sticks in the mud. They do not handle the whole spike situation well. But like looking at this picture here, when Shane gets hurt, look how much this dad loves him. He is just all over him, like hands all over him, just staring him in the face. Like that is sweet. So even though they're kind of shitty parents, like I think they really love Shane. Shane, he has enough freedom, you know, like he never had an issue with, am I allowed to go there or can I wear this? So I'm going to put them in need help. They need help. They need to break out of their little bubble. Again, Degrassi making Christianity just look real bad. They need to bust out of their little bubble, but there's love there. Whoa. Okay, we finished ranking all Degrassi parents. So to recap here, under Adopt Me, we have Spike's mom. And Joey's mom, y'all adopt me. 
These are nurturing, loving, supportive moms. Under great parents, we have Dave's dad, Spinner's mom, Goldie's parents, Tristan's mom, Grace's mom, and Zig's mom. Good job, guys. Under indifferent, we have JT's grandma, Arthur's dad, and Imogen's mom. Y'all are fine or whatever. Under WTF, aka confusing or overwhelming, we have Rick Murray's mom, Shay Powers' parents, Liz O'Rourke's mom, and Melanie Brody's mom. What are y'all doing? Under need help, we got Terry's dad, Riley's mom, Stephanie's mom, and Shane's parents. And finally, under awful parents, we got Caitlin Ryan's parents, Becky Baker's parents, and Peter Stone's dad. Y'all can get out of here. Hope you had fun watching me rank these Degrassi parents. Thanks again, Zane Landon, for this idea. If anyone wants me to elaborate on any of my reasonings, holler below. And if you want to tell me how you would rearrange these, feel free to down below. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, Brimheads.